Which is the best luxury electric car? Is it the new BMW i7 or the Mercedes AMG EQS 53? Well, to find out, I'm gonna compare them across several categories. I'm also gonna see exactly how far each of these cars will go on a full charge by driving them non-stop up the motorway until they run out of electricity. We'll also see what happens when they do run out. Do they just leave you stranded when they die or do they gradually give you lots of warning and plenty of time to figure out what to do? We're gonna find out because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. We've fully charged the batteries in both of these electric cars. I've got my colleague from the German YouTube channel, Daniel Hohmeyer, in the i7. We're gonna reset our trick computers, and now we're going to get going for the long drive up the motorway. Oh, yes. This Mercedes-AMG EQS 53 is supposed to be able to do 357 miles on a full charge. Will it really, though? Will it? Well, the trick computer is saying that it's got a maximum range of 347 miles ahead of it, but a pessimistic range of 237 miles. I wonder what the BMW i7 is saying. It says 224 miles. That's odd, because that car is supposed to be able to do 300 and 85 miles on a full charge. It's been really pessimistic. That might have something to do with the fact that yesterday we were filming drag races with it, so it's probably predicting the range based on the fact that yesterday it was being thrashed quite severely. So hopefully it will do a lot better than that, but we're gonna find out. Classic, we've headed out on the road and we're straight into some roadworks. However, that brings me on to the rules of this challenge. What we're going to do is drive the cars like we'd normally want to drive them. So we're not just going to go super slowly to maximize our range. We're going to drive at the speed limits. Also, we're going to have the cars running in exactly the same setup. We've got the cars doing their regeneration as they think is best at auto mode. We've also got our temperature set to 22 degrees. We won't be using the heated seats though because it's not cold enough. Hopefully that'll keep everything nice and fair when we jump from car to car to compare them. What we won't be doing though is using the adaptive cruise control systems Reason being is that they can often like brake and accelerate unnecessarily, and that's not great for range. Thankfully, that's the end of the speed restriction, which means we can speed up, and blimey, this thing gets up to speed real quick. It's not surprising though. So, as standard, this car has two electric motors with 660 horsepower, 950 newton meters of torque. However, this one has a special performance upgrade which you can fit for 9,000 pounds, which is quite a lot of money. But what that does is give you an extra 100 horsepower. So now I've got 760 horsepower and 1,020 newton meters of torque. It's mental quick. And the pickup is insane on it. It's like, whoa. Well, that's not even in sports mode. Let's whack it into sports plus actually. And, oh, and it's really brutal. And when you're in Sports Plus, you get this crazy like noise. <laughs> As standard, the 0 60 time on this car is 3.8 seconds, but with this performance upgrade, it's 3.4, but it feels quicker. So watch this, right? 50, floor it, 70. I mean, pff, mental fast. That's enough of that. This is about range, not acceleration. But wow, this car feels quick. Should do though, it's an expensive car. £160,000 starting. Oh sorry, if you want that upgrade, £9,000. So this one's like £170,000. Mind you, you are paying for the high performance and a lot of batteries. So the battery pack on this is 108 kilowatt hours. As a result, this car is heavy, just under 2.6 tonnes. Despite being big and heavy, it actually drives really well. So you get this thing on a twisty road, it sort of disguises its weight. It's got certain features such as adaptive air suspension, which just keeps it nice and flat in the bends. And you've got rear wheel steering, which makes it feel more agile than it otherwise would be. Is it an absolute laugh like a normal AMG? Well, no, but I guess it is just the 53 model, not the full fat 63. One of those will be coming along, which will be even more mental. I'm just gonna boot past again, just for one last go, because it is so much fun. Calm down now, no more, no more, no more. Do you know what, now I've lifted off, because this car is in auto mode for recuperation. It's not regenning, it's actually letting me coast, because that is more efficient when you're just going on a straight motorway. Speaking of recuperation, 
when you hit the brakes, the first part of your braking is done as regen braking, so it's the electric motors actually charging up the batteries. Sometimes that can feel a little bit grabby in certain electric cars. In this, it's actually quite smooth. Obviously, if I stab on the anchors fully, then you'll get the friction braking as well. And this car has some really powerful brakes. It does stop very, very well. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Mercedes-AMG EQS 53, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. I've been driving now for 30 miles and this car is using energy at 420 watt hours per mile and converted to kilowatt hours per mile it's 2.38 which isn't great now it's saying the remaining range is 208 miles that's the pessimistic version and 308 miles for the optimistic but based on that energy consumption i'm starting to feel a little bit pessimistic let's see how the bmw is doing Hey Daniel, how are you getting on? Well, I'm kind of starting to get bored as expected. <laughs> it's quite boring and we've only just begun. So, what's your battery status and your remaining range? So my battery is at 84% and the range is 217 miles. Okay, what is your car's energy consumption? 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour at the moment. Okay, that's quite a lot better than this, but it might be because I've been doing silly things like accelerating and decelerating to feel the performance. Hopefully that's not going to make too much of a difference and my energy consumption will improve, otherwise the BMW might win. I've decided to stop for a little comfort break and I thought this would be a good opportunity to compare these cars designs and it's a slightly different story for both of them. So when I first saw the look of the new i7 I thought, oh look at the grill, don't like it, but it's sort of grown on me. Whereas with the Mercedes AMG EQS I've gone off the looks as time has gone on. Yeah being the AMG it's got like a slightly more aggressive nose and it's got a little spoiler on the back but the shape of this car is just designed for aerodynamics but it just looks so boring oh it's just oh it's just so achingly dull I'd rather lose a few miles of range and just have it look good such a shame the only thing I really like about the design of this car is the paint and the wheels whereas this it, it's grown on me I like it the grille's got presence it's got narrow eyes it looks angry and mean it's got lots of contours on it, it's interesting. It's the better looking car. Most people agree with me. However, cameraman Lewis, he's filming me now, thinks this looks great. But he's the only person I've met who does. I've now jumped into the BMW i7 and it's a 760. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, Matt, this is not fair. You're in the MG version of the Mercedes and then you've got the normal i7. What gives? Well, what I've done is pick the top of the range version of each car from Mercedes and BMW. And at the moment, this is the only i7 you can get, all right? So, it's got two electric motors, 544 horsepower, 745 newton meters of torque. It's got a 102 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it weighs in at over 2.6 tons. It's a little heavier than the Mercedes by about 60 kilos, but when you're talking about this much weight, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. In terms of the performance and what it's like to drive, well, what I'm gonna do now is Put it into sports mode and i can do that quickly for 10 seconds using this button here so this is not paddle shifters for the gearbox because there is no gearbox so i pull that and it gives me full power there we go sports mode immediately and then doesn't feel quite as neck snappingly quick as that mercedes amg but the music it plays while you accelerate does seem quicker if that makes any sense have a listen again <laughs> so the sounds on this car have been composed by Hans Zimmer and there's some other ones. So I'm going to go into my mode so you can have a listen. So that was like the sporty noise. Now I'm going to go into an expressive sound. What's that all about? Also, being in expressive mode has changed things like got massage seats and now it's decided to massage me. Look, it's impressive visualization and vibrant lighting events. Don't know what the vibrant lighting events are. Maybe you notice them all when it's dark. Anyway, let's talk about what this car's like to drive. So in terms of the handling, it's okay. You know, it's a big, heavy car. It's not got a sporty setup like Mercedes AMG because it's not the sporty version, but still it goes around corners pretty well. You've got a decent amount of grip. You've got active air suspension, which can stiffen up or soften off depending on the road conditions. You've got active anti-roll bars to stop it leaning too much in the bends, and it does stay nice and flat, but it doesn't really have a sporty edge to it, and the steering is a little bit overly light. I quite like the brake pedal feel though. It's very smooth and progressive. Doesn't seem to be quite as aggressive as the braking on the Mercedes, but then once again, you know, it's the AMG version. It's what you expect. In terms of the transition between regen braking and normal braking, it seems just as good as the Mercedes. 
hardly anything between the two. As with the Mercedes, I'm driving it in its own kind of auto regen setting, so it should just figure out what is the best way for it to use its regen effect for maximizing the range. In terms of maximizing your ability to save your money, this is quite a lot less expensive than the Mercedes AMG. Starts at 110,000 pounds. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the new BMW i7, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. I also drive the new 7 Series, the petrol version in that video. So if you want a petrol version, you can do that because this is actually based on the same platform. They just change propulsion systems. Whereas with the Mercedes, the EQS is built on a bespoke electric car platform and the one for the S-Class is completely different. So far, I've done 114 miles and I've got 60% of the battery remaining and the car thinks that's good for a remaining range of 183 miles. And this car's currently running at 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, is that better than the Mercedes? Let's find out. Hey, Daniel, can you give me your stats, please, mate? So my battery is at 59%, which is 162 miles of range in the pessimistic calculation. The optimistic is 209 miles. My consumption is 355 watt hours per mile, which is 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Okay, so battery remaining is very similar for both cars. This one is still more efficient, even though the efficiency has improved in the Mercedes. Obviously my sudden accelerating and decelerating earlier did, did kind of confuse the trick computer a little bit. It's gonna be interesting to see which one goes the furthest because the two points in the Mercedes are sort of, you know either side of what this car is claiming it's going to do so i have no idea which is going to go the furthest we're going to find out though i thought i'd pull over and talk you around the interior design of this new bmw i7 now when i first saw it it blew me away i thought it was very very interesting modern but now i think it's a little bit overdone it sort of reminds me of a gin palace because there's all like these crystals everywhere not crystals 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 it's all a bit jingle jangle jewelry jewelry there's also lots of layers going on the dash look lots of layers then different materials here like with the metal speakers on this baz and wilkin system here can't really fault the quality though really nice quality the leather is so soft the seats are very very comfortable it feels solid plastics are nice as well as nice as plastics can be but there are two things that put me off slightly this paddle feels cheap, and so do the indicator stalks. Really cheap and nasty, kind of like what you'd expect on a 1 Series, not on the range-topping 7 Series. What I can't fault, though, is the practicality. So, look, big storage under here. The glove box is a decent size. I just access it by pressing this button. There we go, look, it's an all right size, not massive. And it does actually have some gloves in it. Look, gloves. I like the cup holders, look at this. They have individual covers, and they look like eyelids. <laughs> and the door bins are pretty big as well. As for the driving position, obviously it's electrically operated for the steering wheel, which is nice and premium feeling. And it's pretty good. You can sit quite low, which is kind of what you want in a BMW, or you can still jack up the seat nice and high to get a decent view out if you're a little bit shorter. Moving on to the infotainment system. So you've got this huge curved display. It's nice and bright, it's responsive as well. The only problem is, is that it's a little bit confusing. Lots of different menus and icons and stuff like that and if you want to operate lots of the car's functions you now have to do them through the screen not only things like the climate control but also stuff like the distance control for the cruise control why do that there is one thing i want to show you though that i do like too lazy or too rich to open the door yourself press the button and the door opens want to close it again don't have to lean out press the button again and it closes automatically and you can control all four doors electrically just like that just like with the bmw you can get this car with automatically closing front and rear doors however this one doesn't have it it doesn't even have soft close look no soft close it's a 160,000 pound car and there's no soft close that's insane i'll tell you what's also does my head a bit about this car and that's the material quality once again, it doesn't feel like a car that costs £160,000. This leatherette isn't as nice as the actual real leather in the BMW, and these plasticky bits just feel cheaper, and it doesn't feel as solid either. Another thing I prefer in the BMW compared to this is the driving position. So, yeah, it's okay. You sit low down, the position of the wheel is fine. The problem is this dash is really huge. So to get a view out, you have to really sit higher than you might like to. And even then, you're not sure where the front corners of the car are because the bonnet just slopes so abruptly away from you. Also, while I quite like these seats, and they're a bit body-hugging because they're MG Sport seats, overall, I did prefer the seats in the BMW. However, there are some things I do prefer than the BMW, and that's the overall interior design of this car. I just think it's neater, it's classier, and actually looks more modern, 
And I think part of the reason for that is this huge screen here. Now it's actually three screens. So your main infotainment screen here, your driver's display here, and a special screen there for the front passenger. Also the infotainment system itself is just easier to use simpler look there are your icons there no problem at all i prefer it another thing i prefer is the storage in this car you see because it's a bespoke electric vehicle you don't need a transmission tunnel for the prop shaft from the engine to the back for the bmw 7 series version there's no like s-class version of this as a result you've got this huge storage area under here there's more huge storage area under here with your cup holders like that which don't look so much like eyes as they do on the bmw and the storage under here is slightly deeper than on that in the center console in the bmw the glove box is a bit larger too not much but a bit and so to the door bins so those things i like and i also like the fact that with the amg version of this car you have these controls here on the steering wheel for your driving modes rather than having to mess about through the screen like you do on the bmw that's enough about what this car is like in the front let's find out what it's like in the back but let's get driving again time to be chauffeured the distance between the front and the rear wheels in the eqs is slightly more than in the equivalent s class as a result you have more knee room however the knee room isn't quite as much as in the extended wheelbase s class though you can't get a long wheelbase version of the eqs headroom that's pretty good as well even though we've got this big glass roof what i'm not so keen on though is the back seat so there's not that much under thigh support also the backrest is quite upright and that does affect the comfort levels you can get a version with backrests that do recline slightly but they don't recline as much as they do in a mercedes s-class which is a shame you do get some rather nice soft pillows i like that the door bins are a decent size you've got some pockets on the seat backs and you have an armrest here though look at this the way that flops down it just flops down there's no damping. Also, the cup holders feel a little bit flimsy. Hmm. Well, I can't complain about though is the suspension. It's brilliant in this car. So being in the AMG, it's slightly stiffer than in the normal EQS, but actually that's a good thing because when suspension's too soft, the car can feel all a bit wallowy and make you feel car sick. This, the balance is perfect. So you've also got a camera that reads the road ahead, so it'll slacken off if it sees a bump or a pothole. It's so very, very comfortable over bumps, this car. Also, it's very quiet. Mercedes has obviously fitted this with a lot of soundproofing and it does the job. It feels luxurious the way it goes down the road. But how does the BMW compare? Let's find out. I'm going to jump into the back seats of that car now. Okay, so here I am in the back of the i7 and straight away I can tell two things. The first is that while the suspension seems softer, it doesn't deal with bumps quite so well. They come through the cabin a little bit more. Also, because it's a bit more floaty, that can make some people feel a bit car sick. Then there's the sound insulation. It's not as quiet in here as the Mercedes. You get a bit more road noise and a little bit more wind noise. In terms of knee room, it's about the same headroom slightly better seats though here in the back are definitely better they are more comfortable there's more under thigh support and the backrest isn't so upright now i should point out that this particular car is fitted with the twenty-eight thousand pound rear seat upgrade which not only includes these seats but some other bits and pieces as well which i'll explain in a moment but back to these seats obviously lovely soft leather which is nicer than the fake leather you get in the mercedes and look at this through this little screen here, I can put my upgraded seats into first class mode. So I press this button, then this one here, and it's going to move the front seat out of the way to give me more room. Now while it's doing that, I can show you, look, just like in the Mercedes, we have some cushions here, but they're just more plush. Really nice. Okay, so that seat is moving forward, and now this part of my seat is starting to move and lift up my legs. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Got some nice under calf support. The actual seat base is now lifting up to put me in the ideal comfort position. And I've got a little rest for my feet. Look at that. That is absolutely glorious. That's not all though. Look at this feature. It is insane. If I press this button, I can fold down a massive widescreen display. Look at that. That's insane, and it's shutting the blind behind me as well, so I don't get any glare on the screen. The Mercedes might have the biggest screen in the front, but this has the biggest screen of any car in the rear. Now I can control the display once again using this touch screen here. So I'm gonna operate Amazon Fire TV to watch some YouTube, of course. I wonder what I can find there. Hmm. Here we go, finally. 
there's a video. Oh, look, it's a video review of the S-Class. <laughs> look at that. Now, I'm gonna show you this. You can actually view in full widescreen, so you can do different settings and then go full widescreen. Obviously, when we filmed that video, it wasn't designed to go on such a wide display, but you can get movies which are designed for it, and they look incredible. I've got to say, the back seats on this car are wonderful. I should show you this as well, look. Unlike in the Mercedes, this armrest, doesn't just flop down it's damped and then there's this as well look the cup holders look at the way they come out oh the back seats in this car are lovely the mercedes may have it beat in terms of suspension and noise levels but in terms of outright luxury the i7 wins so the BMW is best for carrying people in the back, but which is the best for carrying people's things? So the boot capacity of the BMW is 500 litres, which is quite a lot and it's a nice big square boot. However, the Mercedes, look, it has a really practical hatchback and the capacity is 610 litres. Plus with the Mercedes, if you want to, look, I'm gonna have to climb in, you can fold down the rear seat whereas you can't in the BMW, so you can use this for carrying things to the rubbish tip. Wonderful. Anyway, that's enough of that. What I'm gonna do now is jump into the BMW and we're gonna drive the rest of the way until these cars run out of electricity. So the BMW has 26% of its battery remaining, which is good for 78 miles of range apparently. And it's currently running at three miles per kilowatt hour. The Mercedes has 28% of battery remaining. Its maximum range from that, it reckons, is 99 miles. Though its pessimistic range is 82 miles. It's consuming energy at 361 watt hours per mile, which works out to 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Anyway, enough stats, let's get underway. Well, it's good to be back in the driver's seat. Not. There's not much time left now. It's going dark. Batteries are depleting. How far am I going to be able to go? So I found a place that I know there's a charge that I can use, put it into the sat nav, and it's 50 miles away. However, I'm down to 15% battery, and the car is saying that I've got 38 miles of remaining range, which means I'm having to go a little bit slowly. I'm now slowing down a bit, like you would do normally if you're starting to try and having to eke out your charge to get to a destination. Now, the car's efficiency has remained fairly constant. It's at three miles per kilowatt hour, and so far we've done 241 miles. I'm looking behind me though, and I can see a big lorry right up my bottom and it's probably getting cross because i'm not going quick enough um, let's see how daniel's doing in the mercedes so daniel what are your numbers saying so my battery is at 16 percent at the moment which is an estimated range of 48 miles conservatively optimistically it says 58 miles now that's 365 watt hours per mile which is 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour as far as consumption is concerned. So I don't get that right. Battery's not much smaller in this really. We've got a similar amount of battery remaining, but his remaining range is much better than mine. I don't know, I reckon he can make it to the charge that I've got plotted in here. I'm not sure that I will. It's gonna be a race of sorts, a race to make it to the end of the race, if that makes any sense. Starting to get a little bit of a squeaky bottom. One thing I'm noticing while driving along in this car in the dark is with these panels illuminated, especially this down here, it reflects in the window and you can't see what's behind you in the door mirror. Look, it's really annoying. You probably noticed that as well. Big pothole. The roads in the UK at the moment are terrible. There's potholes everywhere. Hopefully I haven't damaged a rim. Okay, so I'm just coasting along now at 50. So I've got 10% of battery remaining, 26 miles of range, hit 38 miles to go. Uh, right, warning signs, 10%, 25 miles of range remaining. Look, warning up there on the infotainment screen, going, oh my gosh, you need to go to a charging station. Do you want me to direct you there? Do you want me to? Yes, show, yet yeah. no, cancel, okay. don't. Let me know at any time. Yeah, I will. I'll let you know at any time. I won't let her know. I'm gonna press on like a madman. Hey, Daniel, so I've now only got 7% of my battery left, 90 miles of range got 30 miles until the charging stop. Things are looking a little bit sketchy for me. How are they for you? So not quite so sketchy. I'm currently at 10% and 31 miles of range 
conservative estimation and 37 miles optimistic estimation. Well, you'll be fine then. Not sure about me. I'm, I'm going to press on regardless. So Matt, now I'm getting a warning from this car. It says reserve level charge high voltage battery. So it seems to be a little bit unhappy with what we're doing here. And what do you plan to do about that then, Daniel? Well, I think I choose to ignore that and continue. Onwards! <laughs> Onwards! This is stupid. But it's in the name of science. Well, car wow science. Now, if you want to see how far the longest range Mercedes electric car can go, the EQS non-AMG version, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to watch that range test video. Okay, so I seem to have kind of taken a slightly wrong route with the sat-nav, but I think it might work in my favour because the route was trying to take me down the motorway for a short period and I don't really want to have to drive on the motorway going so slowly. Now I'm on some like local back roads, so it should be fine and that's handy because I've only got five miles of range left. The battery is on 2% and I've got 12 miles to go. Unless this car can do seven miles when it's got no range remaining, I could be in a bit of a problem. How much range have you got left, Daniel? 16 miles, and optimistically 19 miles. I like the way that you're optimistic and pessimistic are, are slowly merging, aren't they? They're becoming realistic. He's gonna make it to the charging point. I'm not. That doesn't mean that that car's ultimately gonna go further though. It all depends on how far they'll go when the car saying it's got no miles of range left. No, I'm on a road with no place to pull over really. And that reminds me of my last range test video where things went really badly wrong and I had to suddenly like chuck the car into a farmer's field. To see that video and exactly what happened, click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below. It's a bit scary. I don't want a rerun of that, thank you very much. Oh, this is not doing good going up and down over these blooming crests and stuff. This is very, very bad. Okay, I've just had a development. I've got this symbol here. Drive power reduced, the tortoise. Daniel, I've got reduced drive power. Have you got any developments as well? I can't really notice any difference in terms of power. It just complains a little bit with saying I need to charge, but apart from that, I am pretty good. Well, I'm glad it is all right. It means the world to me. Oh, I'm going really slowly now, but this is what you do if you're trying to get to a destination and you're running out of charge. Oh, good. I'm now on a dual carriageway. I can't go that fast though, just at a speed that's reasonable because I'm now 1% of battery saying 5 miles of range and I've got 8.7 miles to get to the charger. Am I going to make it? If you're watching this video right now I want you to comment now at this point in time whether you think I'm going to make it or not. Quickly comment. Don't cheat just do it right now. I want to see what you think at this point in time. Okay I've left the dual carriageway. I've got no percent battery left but it says 1 mile of range with no percent battery doesn't make any sense to me. I know how they lie about the percent battery, but doing it that way around is stupid. Okay, there we go, that's more like it. No miles, no charge. Thankfully, I'm at where the charging station is, so I'm turning into Silverstone Racing Circuit because I know there's a charge around here. Looks like I'm gonna make it, but that is not the idea of the challenge. The idea is to run out of electricity. So I'm gonna drive around here for a bit and see how far I can actually go because the trick computer is saying that I've gone 289.9 miles so far. Daniel, how much charge have you got left and how much remaining range? My range is six miles. And by the way, that's optimistic and pessimistic. And I'm at 2% battery. You've got loads left in your car then, haven't you? Nothing to worry about here. Okay, I've been driving on no battery for about one mile because it was around 290 miles when it said zero battery, zero range. Let's find out what's happening with Daniel. Yeah, so I have red writing now. My car is getting serious with me. Um, it says reduced drive and performance and I can feel that there's there's no not, not a lot of power left. But I still have 1% battery and three miles of range. I think you're going to end up going further. We'll find out because this seems fine. Even though it says reduced power, it's not terribly slow. Yes, yeah, so Matt, I just hit 0% and I'm in the turtle mode. It looks like I'm on the last leg here. I think it's funny how people say turtle mode. It's not a turtle. Turtles belong in the sea. It's a tortoise. Tortoise is on land. But anyway, 
So 0%, zero range, we've done 295 miles. So let's see how much further your car will go when it's saying it's empty. Matt, what do you think? Who would win in a drag race now between these two? Easy, me. I'll always win. If I accelerate now, the car feels quite a bit sluggish. It's like I have to press the accelerator all the way down for it to move. I'm feeling this car is, is slowly dying. Well, that's bizarre because mine is actually still feeling all right. So I'm just going to accelerate out this roundabout. And it picks up pretty good. I've, I've still got my hand zimmer noises as well. So I'm full throttle at the moment and I'm just about hitting 40 miles an hour now. I'm going to try to put mine into boost mode. Mine goes into boost mode. <laughs> Sport Plus doesn't do anything for me. It feels like it's even slower now, so I'm struggling to make 40 miles an hour now. Oh no, I've just had a noticeable drop in power as well, like serious. Just then it was like it died. Well, let me try and go into boost mode again. Yeah, boost mode isn't as boosted as it was a moment ago. After I've had all that stress trying to get here, thinking I'm not going to make it because my car's been so pessimistic with its remaining range. And now the tables are turned. Why don't you try and just drive past me? Go on, let's have you go in front for a bit. Can you even get past me? Oh, look, you can. See, you're all fine. Is that as fast as you can go? Yeah, I'm burying it to the floor now. I'm at 30. Maybe it just gradually reduces the speed to really give you loads of notice that you need to be pulling over and finding a charging point. I was considering which, which uh, exit I have to take to, to save myself. Go on, go down the straight again. Go on, be brave. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh, Daniel, you probably shouldn't have done that. Don't listen to me. Look at this, I'm going to boost this back. This is full power at the moment. I'm going to give you my full power boost mode. See you later, Daniel. <laughs> I feel like a Formula One car. You are going twice my speed. That's really quick. I'm, sl I'm genuinely slowing down now, so I'm, I'm actually dying. I went from... 17, 16, I'm doing 15 miles an hour now, 14. This is me giving up gradually now. Come on, you can do it. Can you get to me? Yeah, Matt, that is it. So there's no power, no drive. I'm just rolling to a standstill. But now it says stop immediately. Drive will be deactivated. So let's see how, how far this goes. <laughs> Keep going as far as you can, but it's about to stop fully. So it went into neutral by itself and I cannot put it back into drive. So this is the end. <laughs> My car's still going. <laughs> I thought you were going to win, but uh, no. Do you know how far you've gone? 300 miles. Yeah, 300 miles. So I did one extra lap, which is about half a mile. So I'm at 300.5 miles. So I've beaten you and I've still got charge left. So um, you're done. I am done. How's your power? It's all right, I've got boost, I've got enough power. It feels like a, you know, an electric Peugeot 208 or something like that, it's absolutely fine. So I'll be seeing you. Um, I'm gonna probably drive near a charge station so I can just pull up next to one and charge it up. Hopefully I'll conk out there rather than just randomly here. I just want to sit here, enjoy the night, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like a little bit drizzly and um, cold. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, I've suddenly lost all power on this. There was me being all smug, thinking I was going to go a lot further than Daniel, but I don't think it's going to be possible. In fact, I don't know if I'm going to make it around this roundabout. Oh dear. Oh, can I make it up here? Off the roundabout, all to a gate, turn around, want to keep going. Can I keep going? Will it let me go in the reverse? Go into the reverse. Bugger. No. Damn. That was quite abrupt. It was like, it was okay. It had quite a decent amount of power. And then it was just like, within a couple hundred meters just dead so i did about two miles more than daniel 302 miles i won but only just hey daniel you never guess what well you're probably not going anymore are you? <laughs> no it didn't take long i thought i was gonna be going for ages and then it just pumped out really really quickly so i only managed 302 miles so two miles more than you just out of interest what was your energy consumption over the journey 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Okay, so this did three, so it remained pretty constant. Interestingly though, even though I went slightly further than you, I did slightly less of my claimed range. So this car's supposed to do 385 miles on a full charge and I managed 302, so that's 78% of the range. Your car only did 300 miles, but it's only supposed to do 357 miles and that's 84% of the claimed range. So you could argue that 
you're the moral victor, but it wouldn't be correct to do so. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't feel like a victor either, to be honest. You're definitely more of a Daniel than a victor. Yeah, agreed. I'll just give it one last go. Oh my gosh, it's actually moving. I'm gonna get to do some more miles, I think. That's insane. Here we go again. What you need to do now, BMW, is go far enough that you beat 84% of your claimed range, then you beat the Mercedes on that as well. Come on. In order to do better than the Mercedes though, I need to do 327 miles, because that would be 85% of claimed range. Not sure I'm gonna manage that, but every little bit counts. That's funny, that is, that it like slowed down loads, stopped when I tried to put it in reverse, and now it's going again, and has an all right amount of power. It's like it's got a false empty. Oh dear, that was short-lived. This car's dying again. Come on, make it round. Make it round. Make it round, come on. Don't die on the roundabout. Keep going, keep going, please, I beg of you. I beg of you to keep going. Oh look, here's Daniel's car. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Oh, come on, keep going. You can do it, BMW, keep going. Don't break down in front of Daniel. Don't, come on, turn, 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 turn. No, I'm rolling, oh, that's it. That's it, it's had enough. That's it. No, no, I'm just in neutral, I'm just rolling now. I can roll, oh, but that's not gonna help me. Anything left? Literally, no, that's it. That is genuinely it. There is no more to be had. Right, let's see what the final distance was. Yay! I've got an extra one and a half miles. 303.4 miles. Every little bit helps. That means this car's now done 79% of its claimed range. So I've called the RAC out and they sent me one of their special vans fitted with an electric car charger and it's charging the car now at up to five kilowatts. So that'll get me enough charge that I can drive the car again and get it to a nearby rapid charger where I can charge it quickly and then get home. And if I'm feeling charitable, I'll send the RAC onto Daniel afterwards.